It's 2024 and the software industry is kind of looking a bit grim. Well, I'm going to try to give you guys some tips on how to find a software engineering internship in 2024. Now first, you guys might be asking, Justin, how are you even qualified to answer this question? And well, I'm not super, super qualified to answer this question. But what I do know is that in first year, I had pretty much like a 2% interview rate. And in second year, I had a 20% interview rate with a 10% job offer rate. Take that as you will. So other than that, I don't want to waste any of your time. So let's get this started. First up, we have school. While grades aren't everything, they can be very beneficial for you, especially if this is your first ever software engineering internship. And if your grades are super low, all they can really do is bring you down. So you wanna make sure that you get a 3.5 GPA or above. Just know that it's not really the end of the world, even if your grades do happen to be fairly low. What companies really look for when they're looking at grades is just your ability to learn concepts very quickly and effectively. Because when someone joins the team for the first time, they're not really gonna know everything about the team. They're not gonna know the architecture or the tech stack right away. They just want to know how effectively you can learn. And if you can show that in the interview that you're able to learn effectively, then that'll probably supersede grades in the first place. If you're an engineer or computer science anyways, most of your courses aren't even super relevant to the actual industry. Now, let's talk resumes. Resumes are one of the most important parts of the job application process when it comes to getting a software engineering internship. What you want to be using is Overleaf. You can search up Jake's resume Overleaf template online and and that's kind of like the standard for software engineers uh, to use for their resumes. You can also look online for people's personal websites and their GitHubs. Usually, sometimes they have resumes on their profiles attached. And you can look at those for inspiration on how you could format your resume and kind of how to really format your bullet points as well. Just remember that your resume isn't just about listing your experiences. It's about listing your impact, your ability to learn concepts really quickly and apply your knowledge as well into the real world and show that you actually have a direct impact through your own actions. If you're kind of lacking on the experience and skills on your resume, then a great way to kind of bulk up on these skills is by doing a bunch of side projects. And to force yourself to kind of do side projects, I'd recommend joining some hackathons. And if you've never gone to a hackathon before, pretty much a hackathon is a 24 to 48 hour event where a bunch of software engineering students come together to work on a project. It can be a software project or a hardware project. And it kind of just aims to solve any sort of issue. You don't even have to go with a team beforehand. You can just go find a team there. And especially if you're a first time hacker, you can find a bunch of other first time hackers there. And it's a great experience. So I'd highly recommend doing two to three hackathons, especially if you're in first year and don't really have any experience. The second thing I'd recommend is kind of volunteering for an organization, joining a tech club or joining a design team at your university. If you're in engineering, especially if you're in Waterloo, there's so many design teams that you can join. So just pick and choose and just join one, see how it goes. Uh, you can just put all that stuff on your resume and it'll just look better than like a blank canvas in the first place anyway. If you do want to maximize your chances, try to kind of look for specific tech jobs that you want. So if you want to do like a web development, full stack development, look at the tech stack that those particular jobs have. Choose your experience accordingly. If you're doing a hackathon or you're still deciding on what type of design team to join, do whichever has those technologies that those companies use. If you're doing a hackathon, you can do like a full stack project if you want to become a full stack developer a common tech stack that people use when they go to a hackathon is just mern stack so they just use mongodb express react and node and react is a really popular one that most companies use for the front end so that's a great way to start next up we have cover letters now cover letters can be beneficial but they aren't really super super useful all the time you know if you do have the extra time and if it's not too stressful i'd actually recommend doing a cover letter now you could go the simpler route and just kind of use chat gpt and gpt your entire cover letter try to at least tailor the cover letter towards the job itself the experience and also make yourself kind of seem a bit interesting show that you have passions that might align well with the uh, hiring recruiter as well as the interviewer as well because sometimes the interviewer might just pull up your cover letter midway through the interview and if you just say some random stuff that doesn't actually apply to you then they might start asking you some tough questions and it might not look too good for you now this is the hard part actually applying to jobs you can try to see if your university has an exclusive job board so I go to the University of Waterloo and we have an exclusive job board that is called Waterloo Works and it offers uh, students that are in the co-op program with jobs that are exclusive to Waterloo students 
And I know that a lot of other universities like McMaster, Western, and U of T also have kind of job boards that are meant for those university students. And I'd recommend going on those and trying to find internships through there. But if your university doesn't offer that or you're not even in university, then I'd recommend trying out Glassdoor, LinkedIn, Indeed, and any other websites that you can find online, like maybe Y Combinator also offers uh, startups that have internships. Uh, what I'd personally find the best, obviously the university exclusive job boards as well as Glassdoor. I find that usually Indeed and LinkedIn are a bit competitive when it comes to job applications, but Glassdoor have actually found a decent amount of success in terms of interviews for a lot of internships. As well, I'd recommend cold emailing. While it may be a bit of a gamble, I do know some people that were successful in finding internships through cold emailing. And if you're not really familiar with what cold emailing is, that's pretty much just you find a company online and you just like randomly email them. And usually you can just find like a startup's website just find their contact email just email them and say that you're a software engineering soon or whatever and you're looking for a software engineering internship just say that you're motivated whatever and say that you have experience with whatever that they work on and just kind of try to like persuade them to hire you you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and that's why it's a gamble another thing i'd recommend for cold emailing is using linkedin premium linkedin premium i know a friend and she uses linkedin premium to kind of contact random recruiters on linkedin you kind of try to stalk random people as well on linkedin and kind of go on their profile and try to message them and try to see if they can also give you a referral as well because a lot of companies do incentivize people to give referrals because they get a referral bonus i know that even in my company i get a decent amount of money if i'm able to refer someone and they get hired for the job another thing i would recommend apart from cold emailing is by talking to a bunch of professors in your university a lot of the time a lot of these professors have a lot of projects that their phd students are working on and they don't really have the time to actually implement the solutions, the technical solutions. Ask them if it's possible for you to do a four month internship with them doing some research, then a lot of the times they'll accept and you can actually get a decent amount of technical experience from implementing the solutions for these research projects. And you know, overall, it doesn't look too, too bad on your resume as well. There's also a GitHub repo that has a bunch of software engineering internships that you can apply to. And I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Just know that this overall application process is probably the hardest part of getting a software engineering internship so you want to be applying uh, maybe spending one to three hours a day just mass spamming these applications also making sure that your resume is well critiqued and getting advice from other people in the upper years are, as well next up we have acing the interview now when it comes to doing the interview one of the most important things is choosing when you want to do the interview Ideally, you don't really want to be near the end of all the interviews because that's usually when they already have a opinion on what their ideal candidate's going to be because they've already seen like a bunch of other people. But if you go earlier, they don't really have too, too many expectations beforehand. Personally, I've always gone at the beginning. You also want to make sure that for the interview that you're wearing proper attire and that you look professional. At the end of the day, what a lot of these interviewers are looking for is someone that they can effectively work with. Because if you think about it, you're gonna they're going to be working with you for eight hours a day, five days a week. They're going to try to find someone who can also match with their personality as well. Another thing that I would recommend is reading up on your data structures and algorithms. Now, a very, very good resource that I looked at when I was doing my own data structures and algorithms course was a YouTuber called Abdul Bari. He has some really, really good videos, especially on data structures as well as algorithms. And he breaks them down in a kind of in a high level, but he explains the concepts very very well and you'll be able to conceptually understand the concepts just after watching those videos another thing is doing a bunch of leak code problems now from my experience especially for a lot of junior roles most of the time it's leak code easy so just doing a bunch of leak code easies will be sufficient aim to do like the blind 75 i've also heard a lot of people recommend a book called cracking the coding interview but i've personally never actually read that book but you know maybe i'll take a look at that but i'm pretty sure that book is actually just like data structures and algorithms anyway so if you just watch videos from Abdul Bari, you should essentially be fine. Now let's consider some worst case scenarios. Now, first up, Waterloo offers a program called We Accelerate. Now this isn't terrible because some of the experience that you can get from this isn't actually too, too bad. And you can hype it up on your resume pretty well. It's essentially a summer program where you kind of work on your own like side project and you kind of uh, present that to a bunch of um, 
judges or something like that so it's kind of like a glorified hackathon another thing i would recommend is kind of lowering your expectations and going for roles that most people probably don't really want to do in the first place one good one is doing a qa testing job some people might not recommend this but if you get a qa test job at a good company like being like a tester in like ford or something like that then sometimes you can actually transition from that to being a proper uh software engineering intern in the next work term or you can also try applying for locations that no one really wants to apply to for example just try looking for places in like kanata ottawa and maybe even like alberta you never even know if you're not able to do we accelerate then i recommend spending your own time working on side projects trying to build up those skills like we mentioned before doing those hackathons even you can even do design teams uh over a work term so guys just know overall uh there's been a lot of layoffs recently knowing that it's really tough right now so don't be too hard on yourself if you apply these tips effectively, you should be able to, if not like maybe marginally, increase your chances of getting a software engineering internship. I'll leave a link down in the description down below for some YouTubers that you should check out. And I personally recommend looking at Jason Goodison. He worked at Microsoft and now he has his own startup, Tamra Shaheen. And then and there's also Adam Wong and then Joma Tech. So yeah, overall, don't compare yourself to your peers in the jobs that they're getting. Comparison is a thief of joy. Who knows? Some people might have nepotism to get their jobs. Stay happy, stay motivated, guys, and know that there's always hope out there. So other than that, I'll see you guys next time and peace. So